Hi everyone, this is Maths World UK. I'm James Grime and today's guest is Bobby Siegel. Bobby Siegel is a maths teacher, a writer, a broadcaster, he's a triple threat. And today, Bobby Siegel has brought in Mobius strips. Mobius strips are a mathematician's favorite, but this is good for everyone. So for kids of all ages and adults as well. It involves cutting things up, so you'll need some paper, you'll need scissors, and sellotape or glue. And then I recommend that everyone gets involved in this. But before we start, because Bobby and I are both mathematicians, I did ask him if he believed that there was such a thing as a mathematical brain. And spoiler alert, the answer is no. People, when they see numbers, when they see maths, once they've got to a stage of they've lost a the sense of the beauty, they just get nervous when you give them, then you tell them it's time for maths. Or even like the activity we're going to do today, there'll be some parents watching with their children, you know, trying to encourage their kids in the maths. And some of the kids, when they see, oh, it's an activity, it's a, it's a task, they might suddenly start clogging up, thinking, oh God, it's maths in class. So I think it's trying to get people away from that pressured maths environment. I mean, actually, maths can be fun and joyful and playful. So now when people meet people like you, Jim, or myself, they think, oh, these guys, you know, they must have been, when they were young, they must have been born with that enthusiasm. But we had good experiences, and that makes us think that we can do maths. And then we go and spread the word to other people. So maths, there's no such thing that you're born with a maths brain, of course. There are some people that pick up concepts quicker, but all of us can be competent and enjoy the beauty of the subject. I think that sounds completely true. So I think we're going to do something today that everyone can join in with. A little task. So this task here that we're doing now, uh, if you're five or six or seven, you can get involved. This is not aimed at big kids can do it, but parents and young kids can both get involved. So um, get some paper um, and cut it up into slices, um, a few centimeters wide. Um, and, I'll, and I'll do it. Oh, we've got it pre-prepared. Okay. I'm going to do one and I've got some pre-prepared, but just I've got some prepared. All I can show students, look, see, I can cut, I've cut. Okay, good. So firstly, okay, this one's just more like a demonstration. If you get a strip of paper and you, and you uh, form a loop like that. So initially we get um, two edges or boundaries because one edge there on the top part and there's an edge there. Or um, if you're looking at the sides, you could, if, again, I'm not gonna paint this, but if I painted that bit claret, like my West Ham colors in the background, claret, and then you have an inside edge, which would be blue. So, I mean, uh, sides, so you have two different sides. What well, Mobius and Listing did was they said, if you take the paper and near the end, you do a little half twist. And then we can take that together. So let me see. So instead of there, little half twist and then sellotape it. So I'm gonna get my sellotape. So you can do that as well. I'm gonna join you. Yes, I've got my yeah. loop. So that's a loop, but I'm gonna put a twist in it. Twist, a little twist. And if you're at home, you can always press pause um, and play, that's the joy of YouTube. Okay, so we've got that there. So now if you look at the shape, so initially we had a, a, a ring that had uh, two different edges and two different sides. Whereas now, if you, um, you could either get like a, a red pen or, or something uh, like a, a marker pen. So if you get the red pen and keep it on one side and then so in the middle and then draw along the middle. So draw along the middle and keep going, moving all the way through this Mobius band strip. And hopefully, hopefully if I've done this correctly, eventually you should end up without, in theory, having lifted your pen off the paper, in theory, you should have the red or the whatever color line has met back at the same point. So if there were a little ant, that people like using ants, they put a little ant on this and the ant could actually walk around the entire Mobius strip. So this Mobius strip has now just one, has two, is it one side? So it's got, yeah, one side because this ant has not crossed any sides to get to the other side. And if you look at the edges, if you follow it around, it should, in theory, end up back at the same point. You should end up, so it's got one edge and one side. And again, that little twist created that. Now this is where we get a little scissor involved. So if we take, go, you know the little red line that we have or the different colored line? If you put a little slice, put a little slice, little nick in the middle. And now what we want to do is that little nick in the middle. So this is halfway between either side. 
So it has to, it should be in the middle this time. Then we cut along that, cut along that, cut along that. We cut along that red line in the middle and we keep cutting along. Okay, so again, maybe if you've not seen this before, make predictions what's going to happen. What is going to happen is going to make two loops or not. Or And you should have exhibit A. There should be a giant, a giant loop. So it's still, so it's just a, it's a giant, it's a giant loop. And if you, again, if you know, if we, you know the initial one that where we had this one ring. With this one here, if we'd cut that in half, we'd have had two separate. Whereas here, we still kept it as one. So that's exhibit A. Keep exhibit A there. So if children are watching saying normally my lessons so some of my students are going to be forced to watch this in the lesson and there's a they'll say mr seagull where's our learning objective there's not going to be a learning objective i mean just have a bit of fun because normally in my lessons they'll say three learning objectives some keywords and at the end of the lesson we'll revisit have we met the learning objectives bit of fun just a bit of fun so now this okay i hope this can work well now we're going to twist it twice so instead of, so we've got a half twist but give it a second twist and then we'll tape it back up. So you should have a bit tricky, two twists. So again, if you're boys and girls, if you're with your parents you, and you're not, you're having struggles with this, you can get them to help you. So we've got now two twists with this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cut along the middle, cut along the middle. So again, you have to get a little nick so I want people, before they cut it, if they can, they can press pause, make a prediction. What's going to happen? Is it going to be two separate bands? Two? Make a prediction. What do you think is going to happen? So now get a little nick in the middle. So this should be in the middle. Okay, and then now cut along, cut along till you reach the other part. So cut along the middle. You know, most people in the public think of maths gym, they think of just calculations. That's all they think of. They don't think of a... You don't think this is on maps. Okay, and this is going to be very careful. Oh, it's lots of concentration. Okay, I've nearly got it. Ooh, ooh. This is, I'm showing up my, uh, my lack of skills in the cutting department. Well, this, well, there's an extra competitive edge to this now. It's I know, I know, the pressure, yeah. Okay, so you could have made a prediction. What do you think is going to happen to the public? So if you're a student out there watching, and actually if we open it, it should be two interlinking interlinking loops that's amazing just that additional extra half twist has now added two same sized interlinking loops so again if you're again mathematicians if you're a young person out there what we try and do is can you try and work out some sort of pattern related to the twists and the number of cuts we make again we cut it along the middle okay we'll do one more we'll do one more for you one more for you so we've got now we've got a giant one got two so now, again, we do the same thing, have a single, we make a single twist, like the first one, the exhibit A. So, whoops, single twist, and take that up. So now this time, so do you remember exhibit A, the first one, we cut halfway along the middle. This time, as much as you can, we're going to try and cut it from the third. So make a little nick, about a third from the top, about a third. It's not exactly, so a little nick. And now again, you're going to be careful. So now we're going to follow this little nick that's a third of the way, all the way around. And before you cut it, maybe make a prediction. What is this going to happen? Is it going to be two separate things, smaller, larger? So just have a, have a think, um, people watching out there. And then now with that, you follow it along. Follow it along. Lots of concentration. And this will be the last one that we do today. And then I'm going to set people some homework tasks. Okay. Um, I'm really there. Ooh. I think, I think I've done it. Ooh, okay. Ooh, I, oh, ah, okay. Yes. So we should have a larger loop with a smaller one attached. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. It's a larger one. So again, we're, we're, the things that we can, the variables that we can play around with are the twists. So we did one half twist for uh, this one here, and we did two half twists. And then this one here, we cut halfway along the middle. And this one here, we cut a third along the way in the middle. So what I'd like people to do to investigate as a homework and then comment back, was it in YouTube, what's the etiquette to comment below? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. What happens if we cut it a fourth the way along or a fifth of the way along? Or what would happen if you, instead of having one twist, we did it with the, the two twist? 
can you spot any patterns or any sort of any mathematical curiosities emerging? Again, this is fun. This is just, again, when people think of, again, when I meet people in the public, Jim, and I talk about maths, often they think maths is just really complicated sums. But this is all maths as well. This is all maths. So the reason why I also want to do something about the Mobius strip is I've got this little object here. So one of my students before, so I was teaching uh, in a secondary school, and I still teach in a, in a school in London, but I was teaching at a previous school and I was applying for the Quiz Show University Challenge. And one of my students said to me, Mr. Seagull, he's in year eight, so it's about 12 or 13. If you get on the show, can I give you something to take on the set as your mascot? And I said, as long as it's sensible, because some of my students they give naughty things, as sensible things, I could take it and, it and it reflects well on the school. So he 3D printed, and I, I, to be honest, I hadn't heard of it at the time, surprisingly, it's a, 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 something called a Klein bottle. An ant could start on the outside of this and walk through and end up on the outside of it without ever having crossed an edge. So this has one side or but no edges. So this is a this doesn't actually really exist in our dimension, in our three-dimensional world. Um, and lots of people on YouTube and Twitter, on in the maths world, have made hat versions of these. And so these, yeah, these climb bottles, I think they're very, very cool. It's almost like an extension of this uh, in a four-dimensional world, but they're three-dimensional depiction of something in four dimensions this little climb bottle here do you know what that wasn't a mascot it was a oh. math scot oh my god jim that's awesome mascot so this is a a math scot there we go and just before we go uh, yeah. where could people find more from bobby siegel okay um so uh, i use twitter and instagram at bobby underscore seagull and i've got a new youtube channel it's very new like I have like 20 viewers per thing, so it's a very new. I'm getting into trying doing educational things there. Um, and the one thing is if people like uh, reading, um, I think you can probably see it, where is it? And this, this is a blatant plugging, where is it? Ah, I've got it, I've got it, yeah. So I've written a book there called The Life-Changing Magic of Numbers about how maths and numbers change my life, like whether it's looking at sport or cooking or even dating, how you can apply numbers in unusual, uh, in unusual ways. I want to say thanks to Bobby Siegel for bringing in Mobius Strips. Links to his books and his YouTube channel will be in the description, but that's all from now. So I want to say stay curious and I'll see you next time.